Hey guys, what's happening? Hope you're doing great. So we've just released the FCP phone promo kit, the project where you can build a promotional video for your Android or iOS app. And the kit includes the iPhone 10 and LG V30 in both black and white models. So this video is gonna just run you through the kit and show you all of its capabilities inside of Final Cut Pro. So here I am inside of Final Cut and we're just gonna create a new project. Now this is actually quite important, the first step. Uh, when you create your library or rather when you create your sequence, let me just actually say FCP phone. It. Now when I go ahead and create my new project, what I'm going to make sure here is that the frame rate is set to 30 frames per second and that's because the 3D as well as the 3D renders all interact with each other at 30 frames. So if you do make a project at 25 frames per second, what you're going to find is that the screen doesn't match up to the phone in the background. So make sure it's at 30 frames, we're just going to name this phone. And get straight into the titles and show you what's a part of it. So from top to bottom, what you're going to see is first of all the extras, the backgrounds, and I'll explain why you have those later. You have 30 icons which to use, and these are the same as the FCP icons pack. I'll link that in the description as well if you're interested in getting a lot more icons. Then you have the phones multiple, there's four of those, and then followed by the phone single of which there's about 16. And then below that you have all of your titles. So you have your outros here with the store icons, uh, you have your intros and your call to actions as well. But let's first look at what is most important and that's obviously the phone model. So we're going to just take a look through all of the uh, published parameters and what you'll be able to do with it. So let's drag it in. And on the right hand side you can check all of those parameters out. And I think one of the most important ones is just to show you how easy you can change over to whichever phone you want to use. Let's say for instance you want to use the V30Y. It's just a matter of changing it up and uh, the playback is flawless. And that's because all of these renders are done in Apple ProRes. So there's going to be no so there's going to be very little delays when you make any changes here. Now what I also want to do is actually just import my media so that I have all of that and I can show you exactly how you can do it. So what I've got is the V30 screen, the iPhone screen, uh, just the background image, uh, another iPhone screen and then my logo. So we're going to just select all and then import. So first let's just change this back to the X black. And I'm going to import my first screen. So let's click on the import and I think this is the iPhone screen and I'm going to apply clip. And what you should notice straight away is that the phone fits perfectly if it is on the iPhone. And that's because by default the scale is set to 24.66. And what that means is that if you take a screenshot on your iPhone it should automatically map, uh, it should automatically match in with the screen. So the iPhone X screen is 1,125 pixels wide by 2,436 pixels in height, whereas the V30 screen is 1,440 pixels wide by 2,880 pixels in height. First of all, if you find that your screen isn't matching up for some reason, you can actually just tinker with the position and the scale in order to get it into the correct frame. Next, of course, is the phone model. So we've got all of them here, V30 black, V30 white, X black and X white, pertaining to the LG and iPhone models. The next thing you have is the option to add a drop shadow. Now this is only available in some of the phone models but can be quite useful. We won't worry too much there. Also a thing to remember is by increasing the drop shadow blur you are going to slow down your playback. So right now if you see if I press play the background just goes completely grey. And that's a result of the drop shadow blur. So if you are going to add a drop shadow blur only do that at the end I would say. Next we have our background option. So if we just fit it to screen here. You can see that right now it's on the solid and the solid is set to white. So if we wanted to change that, we could just bring in the color picker here and change it. But no need for that. We're going to just keep on going through the options. Next option is the gradient, which is obviously right now set to orange to salmon from the top right hand box to the bottom left hand box. And again, we won't need that. What we're going to have is a drop zone. And again, also you have the option of having none. So whatever you have underneath your title in the timeline, that's what's going to be underneath. But we're going to use the drop zone and we can actually select our drop zone by clicking over here and then just selecting the image. Now what you'll notice here is there's a whole lot of colors in this and it's already distracting away from the phone. So what you can also do is to just two-tone it and what that's going to do is just use two tones for it over here. And that is actually still a little bit bright so I'm going to drop down the uh, so I'm going to drop down the whites to maybe emit a bit more of a gray. So 155, 155, 155. So that looks a lot better already. What you also have with the background is the option to choose a direction that you want to move it in. So let's say for example we just want a left to right. And if you and if I play that back, you'll see that the background is slowly moving from left to right over there. 
Now I also want to just take off this drop shadow because I don't really want it over here. And if we carry on, what you're going to notice is background elements. Now what these pertain to are little accents that you can add to the background in order to make it just a little bit more interesting. So you can already see there's so X's. If I want to use dots, the dots are over here. In fact, let's just switch over to a flat fill at the moment just so we can see these better. So you can see the dots are over there and the crosses are over there. If I want to switch direction, I can do that as well. I just have to change it to, let's say, bottom left and it will come over there. You can have two sets of each, so you can have dots, two sets of dots, so you can just select them both and then tell Final Cut where you want those to go on screen. So I've got the dots on the top left and the, the bottom right, as well as the X's over there. And that is the rig. As you can see, it's playing back without any delay at all, which is perfect to get those edits out quicker. What I want to also show you is that Phone 2 and Phone 3 are basically the same version of itself. The only difference is that Phone 3 is a more zoomed in on the camera version. The same goes for Phone 5 and Phone 6. And now this is useful because of this. Let's say we want to bring Phone 2 in and then bring Phone 3 in. And what I want to do first of all is just go back into my media, uh, use the drop zone and then drop on the Phone X screen for both of them. Now what I want to do is to create a compound clip for Phone 3. So what I'm going to do is select it, right click and say new compound clip. I'm just going to call it 3 so I know exactly which model is inside of the compound clip. Now what that enables me to do is to either shorten from the end or shorten from the beginning in order to get like a cut into a zoomed in shot. So let's say for example if we pulled it over here, what's going to happen is hopefully we'll have some beat that we can just cut to and then all of a sudden it's going to cut into a zoomed in shot like that. Same goes for the end. If you wanted to start out big and then end small, you can do the same thing. So it starts big and then gets small afterwards, which is pretty useful and a nice technique to use to make your video more interesting. I also like using the compound clips for titles so that when we use uh, one of the transitions, then it also transitions out the title. But if you want to learn more about that, check out the transitions tutorial that will come up following this. Now the next thing I want to do is just to show you how the multiple phones work. And to be honest, they're pretty much stock standard as the uh, single phones. They've got two drop zones here instead of the one. So if we go into our media and uh, we've got our phone selected, so our publish parameters appear on the right hand side. Just select the first one and then select the iPhone X screen. I'll say apply clip. And then the same goes for the second one. So I think that this is it over here and apply clip. And as I mentioned, because it is 24,66, it was automatically fitting into the screen. So just like that, we have our media on screen and play black is flawless, of course, as well. So what we also want to do is to just create an end screen here, bringing up the two download buttons. So what I'm going to do is just bring that in and I'm going to want to have that on screen for the whole duration of the title. So I'm just going to drag that a bit longer. And as you can see, it's in the way. So what we can do is just select it and then just move it across over here. And those are called on-screen controls. You can use them to move as well as scale up and down uh, these titles. Now, if we look at the published parameters on the side, what you're gonna see is that you have options to change the shape, you have options for colors, and you've got the option for the drop zone. Further down, what you also have is the controls for the buttons. So you'll see over here, you can actually change the amount of buttons you have. If you just wanna have iOS, you can do that. You can just say one button, and then you can change it to whatever you want. You can just say play or iOS or even Windows. And you also have the option of using text. So you can actually just say download from web.com and you can change your text in this box over here. But let's just say we want to have two buttons and we want to have those to be iOS and we want them to be play. So it's already on play and that's fine. Now with the buttons, you can change the color over to something else. Let's say you're going for a particular style. You might want it to have like a bright red background, maybe even an orange background. That's perfectly fine. Let's put our logo in now. So we'll press, we'll hit the drop zone and we'll go into our media and we'll find our logo and apply clip there. And the logo automatically comes in, but what you might notice is that it's a bit small. So I can actually just scale that up and it fully goes over the side. So what I'm going to do is to go into the background settings of this title, change it to drop zone and then just select the background and then change it to two tone. And then my title is ready. Now the last thing that we need to show you is why you have the separate backgrounds. So you might be thinking with all of the phones you have a different background, why would you need to have extra backgrounds? And the reason for that is say for instance you want to use the none, but you still want to have the background options, perhaps you want to use some of the accents, or you want to have the movement direction, that's cool as well. All you need to do is go into 
your phones, bring those phones in. Uh, so let's say, for example, we wanted to have phone two and then phone three. Let's turn both of those uh, off. We can just go down here, uh, turn that off. And the same with phone three, just turn that off. Like before, I'm just going to create a compound clip. I'm going to call it P3 for phone three. And then I'll shorten it to over here. Now what you have is the option to have the background effect on both of them rather than just one and then it cuts out into the background on the next phone model. So we can just select the background drop zone, uh, select whatever we want the background to be and then change the background over to be drop zone so that it actually reads this and then select the movement. So let's say we wanted it to be zoom in and then out. Now what you're going to notice is that the background stays on screen for the whole time even when the cut happens which is pretty useful. And with those backgrounds, you have an eight second version, which is the normal one, as well as a longer 24 second version. So let's say for instance, you wanna have a whole lot of these phone models on screen without the background turned on, but you wanna use the background overall, then you can do that. You just have to bring in the background longer, put all your phone models in and just go into the background options and select none. So I hope that covers all your questions regarding the project. If you do have any more, please do pop me a comment below. Also be sure to check out the other videos in this tutorial series. We're going to show you exactly how to use the transitions with the project and then show you how to use videos with the drop zones. The final tutorial video is actually going to show you how we made this preview video that you can see on screen now. So make sure you check that one out. Otherwise, I'll leave the link for the project in the description below and I hope to see you guys soon. Bye.